oh, it's good to be here connected together. I want to invite our ushers to come on down, pass out our friendship folders, opportunity for you to sign in your name, pass them down the row, learn the names of people that you are worshiping with today. But right now, let's get on our feet and turn around and say good morning to those around you. response. God is good. And all the time. Do you believe that? Good. Let sunrise people worship God.
I'm going to issue a challenge here to the congregation before we do this last verse. And that is, I love singing this hymn because when Kenny is in the house, I feel the Spirit of God. And Kenny is worshiping. And so, Kenny, I'm going to issue this challenge to everybody, and I'm going to see if you can beat them. The challenge is, can you out-sing Kenny? <laughs> Let's sing the last verse together. I, the Lord of wind and flame, God's people said. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Kids, come on up. Kids, come on up. We've got pudding. 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 You got to say it just like that. There's no G. Pudding. Come on up. We got pudding. We're going to have a pudding party. That's alliterative. Pudding party. Good. So I have a brave and courageous volunteer here named Z. He is here because he volunteered, not because I bribed him a lot. Uh, first, I want to say something. We are collecting Easter eggs. So those of you that are out there, we need hundreds. So bring hundreds of Easter eggs because last Easter we had hundreds and hundreds of pe kids and people, and it was awesome. You guys like Easter eggs, right? Yeah. No? Wow. Do you like pudding? Yeah. Pudding. Good. So I've got pudding. And I have it because it reminds me of something that Jesus did. So John chapter 9, Jesus finds a man born blind. So this is going to be blind Z. And do you know what Jesus does? He scoops up a big pile of dirt. And then he spits in it. And he mixes it around and makes this slurry, this amalgamation, this gunk. And that's just gross. We can't actually wipe that on Z. But what Jesus does is he takes the mud and spit and he rubs it all over the man born blind. And so I do not have mud and spit would just be gross, wouldn't it? Yeah, totally gross. Here, you're going to need this, sir. There you go. And so I was very gentle on you first service. This one, we're going to go a little bit bigger. Are you ready? Good. You got it? Yeah, you're good. Oh, I've got to save that outfit with the shoulder pads. Yeah. All right, here's a big, gloppy, goopy. Here, this eye. Keep them closed. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's good. Here, here's another one, gloppy, goopy. Good. Oh, you're all right. You're good. Good. Thank you, sir. And because I've got it more, let's give you a mustache. You ready? There you go. Oh, you are looking handsome and dapper. Here, hold this up. You're going to need this. Um, now I need you to stand there with it. And just sort of hang out here. This is, let's give you a little bit more right around here. What do you think? Does he look sort of like a raccoon? Yeah. yeah. So, Zeke, you are courageous. So, Zeke is this man born blind. And what Jesus does is he makes mud with dirt and spit. And he wipes it on the guy's eyes. And then he's like, hey, I need you to go wash in the pool of shalom. It's the pool that means peace. And so what happens is this man who's born blind as he washes everything away, he's able to see. What do you think? Have we made him suffer long enough in his yeah. glorious puddingness? Yeah. All right, Zeke, go ahead and wipe. Good. Some of you are diabolical. No, he hasn't suffered enough. 
good. So Z here is the man born blind. So the man born blind, we, oops, clean up in aisle one, please. Um, sorry about that. Um, so the man born blind, he's able to see, and it's incredible, and people are like, wait, what happened? And he says, I don't know, I was blind, but now I see. Do you guys know that from a song? The Amazing Grace, we sing about it. I was blind, but now I can see. And so what Jesus does is he uses ordinary, everyday objects, and it transforms. And so here we use pudding, but Jesus uses mud and spit. Sometimes he uses bread and juice. Sometimes he uses water, like in our baptisms, where we get submerged and we die to our old self, but we raise again new. And it's this incredible thing. Jesus uses ordinary, everyday objects to transform our lives. And then, you know what he does? He uses us, just like he did for the man born blind. He uses us to go out and share about him. The man born blind, as he's sort of grilled about what happened, he's like, I was blind, but now I see. Do you want to meet this man too? And he's ready to take everybody to meet Jesus because Jesus has done this incredible, wonderful, or goofy in this case, thing. Ordinary, everyday objects to bring transformation in our lives, and then we get to go tell people about Jesus. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a Bible verse. Will you guys stand up with me? You all are welcome to do it too. And so we're going to cover like this, and we're going to go, I once was blind, and then you're going to remove your hand, I now can see, and then would you like to meet him too? And we're going to do this. Good, we're going to do this all together. You ready? I once was blind, but now I see. Would you like to meet him too? Good. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to go to Sunday school and we are going to have a pudding party. You ready? Let's go have a pudding party. Here, here. You got a little something right here. Okay, okay. Uh, that's the gross part. So like I was saying last week, you never know what's going to happen at Sunrise Church. Oh. Let us prepare for a time of prayer together. Please remain seated and join us in singing. morning. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together to worship you. 
and to pray for your people in Ukraine who are suffering and afraid. We lift up those who are separated from their families, lonely and exhausted, not knowing what their outcome will be. We know you are the divine healer and you will bring people into their lives to give them emotional and physical strength along with love and comfort to face any devastation that may come their way. We pray for those who see nothing but darkness right now, for we know darkness comes just before your shining light. We praise you and thank you for the hope you give us all, even when it seems like our storms are beyond mending. Father, the news is so difficult to see and hear right now as it is coming to us in real time with real photos that makes it hard to turn it off and turn away. We boldly pray for hope in our world where we all feel helpless and weak at times. We know our lives and situations are never hidden from your eyes. We know you are right here with us guiding us all in every step we take. We know you are the solution to our world's problems. Calm our worries and ease our pain. Father, on the second Sunday of Lent, we pray to be quiet and pause, examining our own lives, looking deep inside to see where you may be calling us. We are all called in different ways as you have graciously given us all amazing gifts to be used to glorify your name. And in these times of tragedy, we can see your love shining brightly through us as we obey your call and praise you, knowing how incredibly, incredibly blessed we truly are. By having you in our hearts and in our souls, we know at any time we can drop to our knees asking you for wisdom, vision, strength, endurance, and love. Father, we know you are there in the quiet, through our tears, through our doubts and our disbeliefs. We know you are our light in the middle of all our storms. As we continue our journey with Lent through you, help us to plan to make sacrifices of our time giving greater attention to you as you transform our lives to serve you by serving others with the faith, hope, love, and encouragement you bring to us every day. Let us bow our heads for a moment of silence to be still with you. Let us now pray with faith and let us pray with hope. The prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For those of you that are joining us at home, we're so glad that we're connected in this moment. It's a time for us to receive our offering. We are truly greater together than we are apart. And together we make the miracle happen for the kingdom of God. You can text a gift to Sunrise at 719 270 4478. You can drop off a gift or bail it into the church office, but right now I invite the ushers to come forward and receive our offering.
And the church said, Amen. Amen. Good morning, Sunrise. Good morning. Uh, glorious day. Uh, haven't we been blessed with our worship this morning so far? What a gift. Thank you. Uh, and we welcome those who are worshiping at home and all around the world. Thank you for joining us in the magic of online worship. Uh, we gather today eager to hear the word of the Lord. And I know that as we gather to hear this word, Vicki's eager to read. Let us pray. O Lord our God, open our hearts, open our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as Vicki reads our scripture and your word is proclaimed, we can hear with joy what it is you have to say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Mark. Chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He hath done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ephatha, be opened. Aren't you glad you didn't draw the straw that Vicky drew <laughs> to read today? Yes. Ephatha, a word, Jesus' own word. An Aramaic word, a word right out of Jesus' mouth to us. Be opened, be opened. Mm -hmm. Dina and I occasionally, my wife Dina and I, will occasionally be in conversation or will be in between conversations and somewhere in the house she'll say something. And I did not hear what she said. And uh, does anyone have a person who mumbles in their house? Um, I, too, am a mumbler at, at times. And she'll say, I didn't hear what you said. I didn't hear what you said. So what are we trying to communicate here? And this idea about hearing is awkward. Well, in the past week, there came across the... Uh, Facebook group that I'm a part of, the Gary Larson Farside Cartoon group, and uh, this image appeared. It shows a man's ear, and it says, selective hearing for men. And there are three settings. One is wife, one is TV, and the default position is off. I didn't find that funny at all. I, I, I thought that was just not even close to what reality is about. But I, I get it. I get it. Oh, if we can only turn things off. I re remember my father as he uh, was more and more dependent on his hearing aids. He would occasionally announce when the family was gathered, I'm turning my hearing aid off now. Don't talk to me. I can't wait. I can't wait for that moment when I can blame it on a hearing aid. Just uh, don't talk to me. Oh, uh, we laugh. But today we're about discovering the importance of opening up, of discovering how it is that we can let go. Is it possible for us to discover 
that in Jesus' teachings, in Jesus' miracle story, we have the ability to comprehend that opening up will set us free and give us great things. Opening up is the path we look for. Uh, the secular world talks to us and, and references what it means for us to open up and, and let it go. Uh, you'll remember Aidan Wilson Tozer wrote, to pray with your fists closed means you're hanging on to something. Let it go. Open your hands to God. Charles Glassman writes, it's okay to be sad. Pity yourself. Cry it out, but don't get too comfortable with these emotions because the next step is let it go. Nicholas Sparks right. if it comes, let it come. If it stays, let it stay. If it goes, let it go. How many in the room are thinking of Elsa? and Frozen, the Disney movie, and her song, Let It Go. If, uh, I want to apologize for those in the room who have uh, children under the age of 12 who may indeed be stuck with that for the next week as they'll sing it over and over uh, again. Uh, Elsa sings, let it go, let it go, when I'll rise like the break of dawn, let it go, let it go, that perfect girl is gone, here I stand in the light of day, let the storm rage on, the cold never bothered me anyway, let it go, let it go. You know, it'd be really annoying unless we hadn't heard it from a bomb shelter in the Ukraine, sung by a little girl in her native tongue two weeks ago when the bombing started, and the innocence of her little princess voice in Ukrainian singing, let it go, let it go, witnessing to all the adults around her, not irritated by hearing it one more time, but weeping with the truth. Shannon Alder, she wrote, the more you talk about it, rehash it, rethink it, cross-analyze it, debate it, respond to it, get paranoid about it, compete with it, complain about it, immortalize it, cry over it, kick it, defame it, stalk it, gossip about it, pray over it, put it down or dissect its motives. It continues to rot in your brain. It's dead. It's over. It's gone. It's done. It's time to bury it because it's smelling up your life and no one wants to be near your rotten corpse of memories and decaying attitude. Be the funeral director of your life memories being buried. Bury that thing. Well, Shannon, would you like to share your real feelings? Uh. Sometimes we hear the wisdom of let it go. Jesus, looking to heaven, sighed and said to the man, Ephatha, that is, be opened, be opened. Discovering that we can be opened is to know that we can be healed and we can let it go to the countless ways that we're crippled, deaf, unable to speak, broken. Vicki read for us this moment when Jesus is traveling in 
the northern section of Israel, just to the north of the Sea of Galilee, a beautiful pastoral area. The crowds would follow him, and they had discovered that among them there was a deaf man who had an impediment of speech, and they they brought this man to Jesus, inviting him to lay hands on him and to offer healing. Doesn't that sound like quite a gift of those around this man to bring him to Jesus and say, Jesus can help you. This will work. Jesus, do what you do. And he did. But first, he pulled him away from all the rest. He took him away privately. And there, you'll remember, the scripture reads that he put his fingers in his ears and he spat and he touched his tongue. Now, that's not quite the formula he used for the blind man. But I think pudding is a good formula. And uh, uh, after the service, Pastor Matt and I will have the, the pudding containers here and we'll invite folks who come up. Uh, no, we won't do that. We won't be doing that. But we could, and perhaps we should. The, the formula is not the critical piece. It's the reality that Jesus is paying attention to this man and knowing that to open him up is critical. Jesus, looking up to heaven, sighed and said to him, Ephatha, it means be opened. And immediately, in the true fashion of the Gospel of Mark, you'll remember the word immediately appears often in the Gospel of Mark. And here it says immediately. His ears were open, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one. And the more Jesus told them to tell no one of these miracles the more zealous they became in sharing the news. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, Jesus has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Jesus has done everything well. Amen? Ah, No wonder they could not hold the news of these miracles and the beauty of this message, Ephatha, inviting us to be open in the generations yet to come. In our world, we who have stopped listening could hear the words of Jesus. We need the Lord's fingers in our ears We need the sigh, Ephatha, be opened. We need to stop mumbling. We've become deaf to the cacophony of people speaking and ranting at one another, not listening. Endless, endless rants of issues that further divide us the same issues over and over again until we do not pay attention to each other. We have stopped listening in our world. Oh, for Jesus to pull us aside and privately put his fingers in our ears and look to heaven and sigh. Ephatha. Be opened. Be opened. We hunger for that possibility. There are just a few words that are given to us in the Gospels of Jesus who spoke Aramaic. Ephatha is one of those words 
that's given to us without translation from Aramaic, his native tongue. You'll remember that a week ago we looked at the word Talitha Kum that appears in our English translations. And in the English translations that are often translated from either the Latin texts or the Greek or the Hebrew, the continuity of these few Aramaic words come to us. Jesus' own words. Talitha Kum. Little girl, get up. And we heard the wisdom of what it means. No matter how many times we fall down, get up one more. Little girl, get up as Jesus takes our hand and lifts us. Today, Ephatha, it almost sounds like a, a modern swear word, but it is an ancient healing word of Jesus Christ himself. Ephatha, be opened a word that can burn into our soul and we can walk and talk with Jesus in our being as we open up. We'll be exploring Abba, Daddy. We'll take a look at Raka, Fool. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There'll be some other words but they weren't necessarily Jesus' words, but they appear as they're making reference to Jesus. Discovering the words of our faith, the words of Jesus himself, have ability to help us focus in on some critical moments. When we fall down, get up to Letha Kum. When we've stopped listening and we mumble, Ephatha, be open. Friends, in our world, we need to hear the message that we do not need to live with our doors closed, our minds closed, our reading closed, our growing closed, our hoping closed, our blessed changing closed. Instead, let us hear Jesus Christ calling us, Ephatha, be open. Let us live with open hearts and open minds and open doors. Let's live into this world knowing that for us to be the agents that are not deaf, are not mumbling, but we're open to this world, listening, paying attention, alive in the middle of it. Let us live boldly in the Spirit and in the words of Jesus Christ who's gone before us. Friends, I pray that in the week ahead you'll hear an echo of a word that you won't be able to remember or pronounce. Ephatha. E-P-H-P-H-A-T-H-A. Ephatha. If only we could read this screen and trust it. If only we could read the screen and say, gosh, that all makes sense. Well, it does. They're Jesus' own words. And for today, the word of the Lord, Ephatha, be opened. Amen? Our music team's going to come. They're going to help us. We get to sing a, a, an old classic, Softly and Tenderly Jesus is Calling. And I hope you'll be thinking about opening your ears. Because if you're not listening, Pastor Matt and I are nearby, and we have three cases of pudding. <laughs> and as you leave, we'll put pudding in your ears. Or not. I'm playful because the essence of what we're doing here is opening our lives to Jesus Christ. And our world needs Jesus. Open. Be open. Let it be so. Softly. Tenderly. Jesus is calling. As we're able, let's rise. Let's sing.
Come home. Ah, we who are weary, come home. Did you get the message today? Be opened. Be opened. And go forth knowing that when we are open in Christ, the world is an adventure. And we are the ambassadors love of love in that world. Let's go do that. Reminder that as, before you leave the sanctuary... You're welcome to take a few moments to pray. There's also the opportunity to receive communion here in the center of the aisle. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among us and those we love always. Amen and amen.